I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good afternoon, Warriors. I'm Kendall. And I'm Wyatt, and this is your April 11th feature edition of Warrior TV News. On today's broadcast, we take a look at how social media affects our school. Take a look at the Social Studies Department's annual Econ Mall experience. Look at the Riley Dance Marathon and how they are preparing for next year. All this and more on today's feature edition of Warrior TV News. I'm selling prom tickets. Oh, when's the last day to get those? Usually Today's the last day, April 11th, in the main office after school. In this generation, teenagers are extremely reliant on social media and technology. Katie Long, Macy Perry, and Jacob Stidham show us how technology affects Whiteland Community High School students. But first, let me take a selfie. 98% of 18 to 24 year olds use social media. 2.9 billion hours are spent on YouTube a month. An average of 190 million tweets are sent a day. An average of 60 million pictures are posted a day on Instagram. 35 million of those being selfies. My name is Nikki Flash and I'm addicted to tweeting. My name is Mr. Williams and I'm addicted to Edmodo. I'm Miss Gunn and I'm addicted to Facebook. I use Twitter and Instagram because I feel like a lot of our peers are on there and you get to interact with them. I have Facebook, obviously, and then I use Twitter but I don't tweet. <laughs> I just use it to keep up on stuff. I use Instagram and Twitter. Twitter and Instagram. I use uh, Facebook and Twitter mainly. I use Twitter and Instagram. My favorite social media site would be Instagram. Facebook for personal reasons because I'm old, I guess, and that's the only thing I use. Um, and then Twitter, I use it for student council. Just to find out what's going on with people at my school. I get on there to just see what everyone's talking about. Since technology is constantly evolving, the age children start using it is becoming younger. We go to Mr. Williams and Miss Gunn to get their parental advice. I think there's an age limit. I mean, you know, my kids who are 13 don't have cell phones. They don't have Facebook. They don't have Instagram or Snapchat or, or any of those because they're just not mature enough to handle it. My kids have, my old iPhone is now their iTouch, I guess, or iPod, whatever you want to call it. So, but at the same time, they can't, they don't have unlimited access to it. They only get certain times that they're allowed to play on it. As you can see, many adults have set limitations on their child's usage of social media. Many teenagers at WCHS set their own limitations. On social media, I probably spend like four or five hours a day. <laughs> However many hours we're in school, so about seven hours a day on social media. We're looking for sophomores who will be juniors next year to take U.S. history, specifically considering possibly taking a new course we're going to offer, which is going to be a dual credit option through Indiana State. Occurring twice a year, Econ Mall has become a popular event here with WCHS students and staff. Danny Scott, Molly Warner, and Kyle Harmony give us a look at that wonderful experience our students and staff can have. As many students and staff know, Econ Mall is an important event held at WCHS every year in the LGI room. Warrior TV takes a look at how Econ Mall went. Uh, we have several things. They do a research project to see what you know what they may want to sell their product for when they get to Econ Mall. So they go around and talk to different people and, and uh, get some research before they make those decisions. They also do a business plan uh, to identify what they're doing, how much their costs are going to be for the product. Um, first period is a very, very small class. So um, I only have about 18 total students in first period compared to 31 to usually 28 to 31 students later in the day. So in every other class, most of those tables are all going to be filled where first period 
first period it's not. Uh, we also have an issue where a lot of sophomores come down, and since freshmen are typically at the freshman academy last year all day, this is the first time they've ever experienced e-com all before. Through hard work and studying, students prepare to showcase the skills that they have acquired over this semester. WTV takes an inside look at what these skills are and how they paid off. Ecom Mall has been great. I made a lot of money, so make sure you buy it next year. Make sure you do it good next year. I feel like it's pretty awesome because all the food's pretty good. I like Ecom Mall because there's a lot of opportunities to buy food, and I'm normally really hungry in the morning. So, and the chocolate milk's really good. I also think Ecom Mall is pretty cool. Uh, if you haven't had Matt's biscuits and gravy, go get some. The Ecom Mall is a unique experience that gives students the opportunity to showcase their entrepreneurship. Be sure to come to the Ecom Mall next year. Outside Miss Muller's room, I'm Danny with Kyle and Molly, Warrior TV News. What are all these posters doing here? They're for the World Cultural Fair. Can't you read? What's that? The World Cultural Fair is something here at WCHS that allows students to see different cultures, uh, maybe play some games that they never knew or try some food that they've never even seen. So when is it? It says right here. Many WCHS students and staff have heard of or participated in this year's Riley Dance Marathon. Corey Paffenberger and Taylor Brinkman give us a look at how this event affected our community. Throughout the 2013-2014 school year, many WCHS students and staff members were involved in helping put the Riley Dance Marathon together. Warrior TV chatted with Riley Dance Marathon coordinator, Mr. Massey, and with a few student executive members on how the event went and on their involvement in the planning of the dance marathon. It went really well. We set a goal of 13000 and we almost reached our goal. We were about $600 away. From pre-registration to the people who actually came, we had over 300 guests show up. There was a lot of preparation. It started as early as September, and the month leading up to the marathon, we met once to twice a week, an hour before school, just kind of preparing, getting things done, and then finally making tasks and delegating and saying, this person is going to take care of this, this person is going to take care of this, and then following up, and then making sure everything was in place. My committee was in charge of all of the fundraising, so we set the percent nights and we decided on what fundraisers we were going to do to raise money. It was a lot easier to get everything ready because we knew what to expect. I'm in charge of the Family Relations Committee. We were in charge of getting all the kids here together and everything, in charge of the food for the family room, making sure everything in the family room went well. I'm the chairman for the Radio Promotions Committee. We just got the word out there through the school radio for the dance marathon. Uh, my guys, Zach, Landry, and my girl, Kylie, um, we all are on the radio and throughout the year we just put uh, promotions out for uh, Dance Marathon. Following the success of WCHS's second Riley Dance Marathon, Warrior TV asked current executive members on how to make next year's Riley Dance Marathon even better. So we're working on communication for next year. I would like to see a lot more clubs and maybe members of the community coming. Um, I think that would just make it so so much better. More committees and some other committees didn't, they had smaller tasks and some of the other committees had a lot larger tasks so maybe just trying to even those out more. I think it's going to be even better next year. I think more kids are going to get involved with executive and committee. Preparation for the 2014-2015 Riley Dance Marathon is already underway. If you're interested in being a part of the planning process, talk to Mr. Massey in room C104. Outside Mr. Massey's room, I'm Corey with Taylor, Warrior TV News. Hey, 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 please pick that up. Um, no, why should I? It makes us look trashy. We need to help the custodial staff out. All right, cool. I'll pick it up. And that's all we have on today's feature edition of Warrior TV News. Until next time. Have a good one.